Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to create this easy sew pointed shoulder shrug. Let's get started. We're going to use the pointed shoulder shrug sewing pattern available at catcal.net or on my Etsy shop link below. This pattern comes in sizes extra small to 4X. Our patterns were made for drag queens as we increase shoulder width, arm and leg width, and lower crotch inseams compared to standard women's sizing. However, anyone can wear them. Please review the size guide to find the size that's right for you. Once you've downloaded the pattern, you simply want to print it out. For more information on printer settings and pattern assembly, please watch this video linked in the top right corner. After your pages are printed, you'd want to trim off the page margins using a paper trimmer. Line up the pages by number and tape them together. You can then cut out the pattern shapes according to your size, using the size guide provided. You should then be left with one sleeve pattern, which you will use for cutting out two pieces, one front pattern to cut on a fold, one back pattern to cut on a fold, one collar pattern to cut on a fold, and three interfacing patterns for the pointed shoulder shape, a front, back, and sleeve pattern. For this project, you're going to need fusible interfacing. Here, I'm showing three types of interfacing, a light, medium, and ultra firm. I'd suggest not to go with the light as it does not provide much structure. You can go with the medium, although the shoulders may eventually collapse. I definitely would recommend the ultra firm interfacing. I love this stuff and tend to use it for a lot of drag projects. It will definitely keep the structure without having to create a shoulder pad. However, you can create a shoulder pad if you know how to do so. Because the ultra firm interfacing is very thick, I like to trim off the seam allowance. All of our patterns do come with a half inch seam allowance unless otherwise stated. Removing the seam allowance for these pieces will allow for an easier sew. However, if you use a medium weight interfacing, you do not need to trim off the seam allowance. Here's an example of how the interfacing should be placed on the fabric that we will iron on later. We're then going to cut our interfacing pieces for both shoulders. For the fabric, you should use a nice stretch four-way or two-way fabric you will be putting on the garment similar to how you would a t-shirt. I like to use a shiny Millie Skin spandex. I love this fabric, it's super comfortable, doesn't wrinkle, and allows for lots of stretch. We're then going to trace our paper pattern pieces onto our folded fabric to cut out our pieces. You should then have two sleeves, one front, one back, and one collar. We're then going to iron on the interfacing to the wrong side of the sleeves, front, and back pieces, leaving a half inch of fabric around the interfacing, away from the edge, making sure your glue dots of the interfacing are facing down. For this type of interfacing, you will have to hold and press down with steam to get it to stick. Be careful not to burn your fabric outside of the interfacing, so please practice this before. We can then sew the garment similar to a t-shirt. First stack the front and back pieces, right sides of the fabric facing each other, and serge along the shoulder seams. If you don't have a serger, you can sew with a zigzag stitch. Then lay out the front and back wrong side up. Pin the sleeves wrong sides up as well, matching the notches. The back notch will have two triangles and the front should have one. This may be a little tricky with the interfacing, but just take your time. You can then serge the sleeves onto the front and back armholes. Because there's a sharp corner, you may need to serge the front and back in two steps. If you're using a zigzag stitch, you should be able to sew in one step. Once your sleeves are sewn to the front and back armholes, you can then pin and serge the sleeves closed, starting from the wrist all the way to the sides of the front and back a little bit lower than the armpit. We can now work on the collar. Simply fold the collar horizontally in half, 
right sides of the fabric facing each other and serge the ends together along this angled end. You can then fold the collar vertically in half, right side out. Add some pins evenly around the collar to find your center front and side seams. With the right side of the garment shown, pin the collar upside down around the neck, outside of the garment, making sure your collar seam is in the back, lining up with your center back piece. You can then serge the collar around the neck. Finally, you can hem around the front and back and the sleeves using a blind hem or a zigzag stitch. And here's the finished shrug. To drag it up a bit, I like to add some rhinestones to the points of the shoulders. However, a full rhinestone shrug would also be amazing. Such an easy sew. I love how this garment gives a structured silhouette to my shape. If you decide to create this pattern, please tag at CatCow or at I'm Sour Mandy. If you're interested in creating the other garments modeled here, please check out those videos I have created on my channel. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.